Now, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video and episode of checking out very interesting airports all around the world, we are in New York and we're gonna check out the most hated airport in America today. And that of course is the infamous LaGuardia Airport. <laughs> yep, no one likes this one actually. It is definitely one of the most hated airports actually around the world. And to be honest, I can definitely understand why. I have never been to LaGuardia Airport because it's more of a domestic regional airport of New York. I've only been to JFK, but you know, we all know this airport's problem. It obviously sucks for passengers to be here. It isn't a very clean airport, to put it this way. The infrastructure is not good. You know, for example, there is no subway station to make access easier. You actually have to get an Uber ride to get here. The terminal sucks, for example. <laughs> yeah, it's very outdated. There isn't a lot of room, which is definitely a problem right now in this time because you know we have to all take a little bit of distance from each other and you know at this airport it's not really given and that results into this airport's having one of the worst delays and cancellations in the country <laughs> which is not good now that is the problems that the passengers face when flying here at the airport but there's also some other problems not for the passengers but for the pilots flying in or out of this airport you know actually sitting at the controls of the planes you know for example these two runways that we have here are pretty short for modern standards. They're only 7,000 feet long each, which is around like 2,300 meters, around that. These are not long runways, definitely not. You know, especially comparing that to the runways of JFK Airport, you know. These are 4,400 to 2,500 meters long, a lot longer, which translates to this airport being a little less safe, obviously. And also, there's a little bit of a problem of big airliners not being able to fly into this airport the biggest plane to ever be at this airport actually was the 767 and you'll know that the 767 is not the biggest plane at all in the world and you know as a pilot you always want to have some spare runway left in case something goes wrong obviously which you might not actually have here that might be a problem now whatever a plane that should definitely not have a problem operating here is the Cessna 172 yeah to sum this whole airport up, it's basically a hellhole of a hellhole, both for passengers and actually for pilots as well. By the way, something that I f actually forgot to mention is that the weather here can be quite challenging. There can be a lot of fog here compared to airports like JFK. Also, the wind situation isn't very easy here sometimes. Also, you don't want to encounter birds, right? <laughs> now, of course, let's do a little bit of an experiment. Let's try operating some big planes here. You know, we mostly have like A320s and some CRJs flying here, or sometimes even some 757s. I don't know if there are scheduled routes on the 767s right now to this airport, but I don't think so, actually. Yeah, this doesn't look good. You know, if a wing spans beyond the actual runway, then that brings bad luck. I just invented that phrase, I don't know. <laughs> Alright, let's just go ahead and take off. Again, the 767, it has operated at this airport before. We should actually be able to make it. At least I hope so. The 767, it's quite tough when it comes to runway length. There are planes that are a lot worse. <laughs> There we go. That was quite a nice takeoff. We still had a little bit of runway left. The little runway extension here into the water. That is most probably some kind of artificial island made out of concrete. Really does help in making this runway a little safer. Now, as expected, the 767 worked here just fine. We just departed with the worst airline in America out of the worst airport in America. Just, just kidding with the airline part. All right, welcome aboard the A350 by Airbus. This is not only a way more modern plane, but also a plane that is a lot more different. Uh, let's try landing this plane here. I don't know if you could actually be able to, at least on paper, be able to legally operate this plane here, but uh, I guess in this practical test, we're gonna find out. For this landing, let's actually get a little bit of wind in here too. Very nice. All right, we'll come aboard the A350 now. The thing about these newer, more modern planes is that I feel like they need quite a longer of a runway, at least for a landing. You know, they don't stop very quickly. Let's see if the upper medium-sized A350 is able to stop at this runway here. Alright, that was a landing. Firm, but that was needed. Set the reverse thrusters. Okay, looking good actually. 
Alright, we could even hear some clapping in the background a second ago. That was actually pretty nice, I would say. This was quite a good stop. We did use most of the runway, though. There is not a lot of spare runway. We used maximum brakes, maximum reversers as well. Ah, this could actually get close sometimes, you know? This time around, I made sure to have a very firm touchdown at a very slow speed on the touchdown zone. That was pretty much on paper a perfect landing. It might have not been very smooth, but you know, perfect landings don't always happen. Pilots do sometimes make bad landings. Maybe they're coming in too fast, or maybe they touch down a little late. You cannot do that here. That isn't tolerated here, and that is actually quite a big thing. But alright, that, that landing worked out perfectly fine still. So we can move on to a bigger plane. Yeah, let's genuinely go big now. Let's try the 777. Now the 777. That one is actually quite a bit bigger and requires quite a long runway as well. I think in real life this plane would not be able to do safe operations here. I'm not really comfortable with this plane flying here, honestly. Let's see if it can land here at least somehow. Jesus Christ. Yeah, today's landings are not that good, are they? <laughs> okay, now a stop, please. Max brakes now, which is not really what you want to do. We're probably going to see the brakes overheating in a second, and this might actually be a runway overrun. Oh, Jesus Christ. Nah, not very good. Luckily, this airport is actually equipped with an EMS safety bed, which I think you have seen before. Basically, if a plane overruns here, then it gets stuck in here and doesn't, you know, roll into the city because you don't want to have that happening. Or perhaps in the water, which is actually a little worse. There is a little bit of protection against these overruns, but especially in like very big planes, these don't really help that much. Alright, now let's obviously try out the 747 to finish this off a little bit. This one actually needs a surprisingly small runway. Alright, that was a good landing. Let's stop this plane now. Again, it shouldn't be that much of an issue. The 747, at least for its size, is quite a fast stopper. Even though, again, you have to run this plane at maximum braking power, which you don't really want to do. I mean, you know, you don't want the brakes overheating, obviously, which can happen pretty easily, actually. Now, yes, in conclusion, what can we say? LaGuardia sucks. And I think it'll stay that way for a long, long time. You know, right now, the only thing for the passengers that you can do is renovate Innovate this airport. You know, build some new terminal and all that stuff. That would be nice for the long term, right? But for the short term, yeah, probably right now, construction work is the worst thing that you can do to this airport and to its passengers. So that is obviously not an option. So, you know, this airport will just stay that way. Another option would obviously <laughs> to just close this airport down. You know, we have had this discussion a lot of times before with airports in the middle of the city. There's a problem with noise pollution, obviously, and it obviously takes a lot of space away way too and space can definitely be a problem in big cities airports take away an enormous amount of space you know how many people could live here if you just scrapped away the airport and built some houses on it and you know there's also the problem of noise pollution in the city itself you know airplanes they do produce sound the only thing that i think is amazing about this airport is that you have a very nice view of the skyline and you're a little bit closer to the city especially compared to JFK. But the airport itself, it sucks, you know? The arrival into it might seem cool, but actually being there isn't very nice. So, yeah, guys, thank you for watching today's video, and I'll see you tomorrow. As always, good night.